Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how to use Google Spreadsheets to create Google Forms. As you can see, I've opened a Google Spreadsheet and named it Construct Google Form. This form sheet will contain the data for our form. I've also created a blank form called Apple Sales Form in Google Forms. I have kept it open in this tab. Our goal is to use data in the spreadsheet to construct the form here, like adding new form fields and populating its options fields and setting validation rules. In the next tab, I have kept open the preview of our Apple Sales Form. Now let's see it in action. Let me first paste the form data here, then click on Construct Form. Here you can see it has started adding new form fields. Next, let's see how to update your form by adding new form fields or updating options. Let me add an extra form field called Notes. I will also add bunch of products in the Options tab. Now let's run this by clicking the Construct Form button and see what happens. When I click it, you'll notice that the form starts to construct again, and this time it has also added our new form field called Notes. If I refresh the tab containing preview of the form, you'll notice that all the form fields have been properly rendered, and it's displaying our newly added options also. Now let me show you how you can set this up for yourself. First of all, make a copy of this spreadsheet. You can get the link to the spreadsheet in the description below. Then create a new Google form. You can do so quickly by typing form.new in the address bar. Or else you can also do that by visiting your Google Drive account and then clicking on plus new button. There you will have option to choose Google Form. Once you have created your Google Form, copy the URL. Now go back to your spreadsheet and open the script editor by clicking on Extension and then App Script. This will open the editor in the browser itself. Now you need to replace this form URL with the copied URL from our earlier steps. Hit Save and you are done with the code for now, but keep it open. Now go back to your spreadsheet. Next step is to create a button and assign the code to it. For that, go to Insert Menu and then click Drawing. There you can make any shape and format it so that it looks like a button. Let me do that quickly. And now our button is ready. Now go to the editor page again and copy the name of the function construct form. Now back in the sheet, right click on the button. This will bring up the three dots. Click on the dots and choose Assign Script. In the input box, paste the copied name. When you first click on this button, you will be asked to authorize it. Go ahead and allow all the permission asked in authorization windows. Now to construct form, we need some data. So let's do that. You have got five columns here. In the question column, you will enter question of your form field's name. Any additional info or help text will go into help text column. Now in type column, you can choose from several options like text, number, date, radio, checkbox, dropdown, and paragraph depending on your requirements. For making a field mandatory, type yes in the required column. Radio checkbox and drop-down fields require options. To provide options, use comma-separated values. In my example, for the product options, I used this formula to convert the list in the options tab into comma-separated values. This formula first filters the column and exclude any blank rows and then join all the values using comma with the help of join function. You can use the same formula to pull any range of values into the Options column. And for the color options, I just typed the color variance, separated by comma. Now you can test it by clicking the Construct Form button. That is all you need to go on with this form constructor. However, if you are interested in the code walkthrough, then keep watching the video. Alright, then let's do the code walkthrough. Here I am in the editor again. First, we have a constant form URL that stores the URL of the Google form we want to work with. Now, let's dive into the populate form function. This function's purpose is to populate the Google form with questions, help text, response types, and other options from a Google spreadsheet. We open the Google form using the URL provided in form URL. Before we proceed, it's important to clear any existing form items. Here, we have a loop that iterates through and deletes all items in a Google form. Now moving on to the next line, we start by calling spreadsheetapp.getActiveSpreadsheet to get a reference to the currently active Google spreadsheet. Next, we use the getSheetByName method to retrieve a specific sheet within that spreadsheet, named form. The form sheet variable now holds a reference to that sheet, which allows us to access its data. Here we're interacting with the form sheet. We call getDataRange on form sheet to get the entire range of data in that sheet. This is often used to capture all the rows and columns with data. Then we call getValues on that range to retrieve the data as a two-dimensional array. 
where each row of the sheet corresponds to an array in form data. This line removes the first row of the form data array. The first row typically contains headers or labels in a Google spreadsheet, and in this script, it's not needed for form creation. So Shift removes that row from the array. In this section, we create the form items array, which will be used to populate the Google form. We use the map function to iterate through each row of form data and transform it into an array of objects, where each object represents a question or form item. Question, help text, type, required, and options are destructured from each row. These variables correspond to the columns in the form sheet. Required is converted to a Boolean value by checking if it's equal to yes. This is important because Google Forms typically represent required with a Boolean value true or false. Options is split by commas, and then each item is trimmed to remove any extra spaces. This is done to create an array of response options for questions like checkboxes, radio buttons, and dropdowns. In this loop, we are iterating through each element in the form items array. Each element represents a question or form item, and the properties like question, help text, type, required, and options are extracted from each element using destructuring. We initialize a form item variable. This variable will be used to hold the specific form item, for example, a text question, a multiple choice question, that we will create based on the type specified in the form items array. Here, we're using a switch statement to handle different types of questions. We convert the type to lowercase and remove any leading or trailing spaces to ensure consistent matching. If the type is paragraph, we create a paragraph text item using form.add paragraph text item. This is typically used for longer text responses. If the type is checkbox, we create a checkbox item using form.add checkbox item. We also set the choice values for this item based on the options from the spreadsheet. If the type is radio, we create a multiple choice item using form.add multiple choice item. Again, we set the choice values based on the options. If the type is dropdown, we create a dropdown item using form.add list item. The available choices for the dropdown are set using the options data. If the type is date, we create a date item using form.add date item. This item is for selecting dates. If the type is not recognized or is missing, we create a default text item using form.add text item. This is a generic text input field. For each form item created, we set its title using set title, provide help text using set help text, and specify whether it's required using set required based on the required value from the spreadsheet. This brings us to the end of the code walkthrough. Let me remind you once again that you can find the link to this spreadsheet in the description below. If you liked the video, then hit the like button. And please subscribe to my channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.